we'll head into custom filters and we'll also look at a great little trick to test and make sure that these filters are doing what you think they're doing so you don't have to wait two weeks to find out that the filter wasn't quite what you thought it was. Let's go ahead and head back over the interface here. Again, we're going to be in the admin interface. We headed over to the views and we want to take a look at the filters that are there. You always want to have at least one view here that is raw and unfiltered. In our case here, I'm going to jump down, take a look at a sandbox one that I've got set up. Here, We can look at the filters that have been applied. When we come to our option here to apply a new filter or create an existing filter, we want to come over here to custom filters. And that's going to give us a whole new set of options down here. We can exclude things, we can include things, lowercase, uppercase, search and replace, or advanced. We're not going to touch on advanced quite yet today, but we will take a look here and exclude and include first. Now remember, as we said before, excluding will take anything that's going to apply in this filter and keep it from getting into your view. That I think makes sense. Where it gets a little tricky is on the include. Because as soon as I say to include something, it's not just going to include what we put here, but it's going to exclude everything else. What this really should be is include only. Because as soon as I touch on include and apply this filter, it will only allow the things that I've included here into the filter. So that's something that trips people up all the time. Please keep that in mind. Now in the last video, we saw how we can take an IP address and we can use that to exclude our internal traffic. But let's say for the argument that you wanted to go the opposite way. You wanted to include only your internal traffic to see how people inside your own company were using the website. Let's create one here called include internal traffic form filter here. And what we're going to do, we've got lots of options here available to us. We can do filters on all kinds of different things on here. But in this case, what we're looking for is IP address. And I want to point out here that IP address is something that you can really only get to from filters. You know, we can't do advanced segments on IP addresses. We can allow this here for IP addresses, primarily because this is something that we have to know ahead of time. You have to apply a filter ahead of time. Some privacy concerns are lessened there. But this is a great way, and really one of the only ways you can do with things with IP addresses in Google Analytics. Now, we're not going to get too far into regular expressions here, but I do want to point out that these are regular expressions that are going in this filter pattern. So if you're going to put in an IP address like this, you want to make sure that you escape out these dots. So if that doesn't mean anything to you, just know this. You should go before each of those dots, and you should put a backslash, kind of like it shows you down here. Go ahead and save that, and we would have our internal traffic. Let's also take a look at a couple other things we can do here. One would be to lowercase our traffic. And this is one where it's really useful. This is one of the few filters that I say people should apply pretty much across the board because it cleans up your data before it ever hits your account. So let's take a look at what that would look like. Now, if we look here, if we want to apply lowercase, the most common way that we do these things too would be things like campaign sources, campaign mediums, things like that. But before we apply it, let's take a look why. To illustrate this, I'm going to give kind of a little bit of a silly example here. Let's say we were to head on over to our website and we were going to put in some campaign parameters. Now, one of the things we can do is we can watch this data come in. We've looked a little bit for in the past about uh, the real-time reports, and this is something I think is a clever trick we can do to make sure our filters are working. Fairly recently, Google Analytics did start applying filters to the real-time reports, and this is a big boon for troubleshooting. If I come here and look at our real-time reports, I can see visitors that are streaming in here. And one of the things I can do is I can look at campaign data. So let's say, for example, that I were to put on here UTM medium is, let's put some camel case, some kind of crazy case here. UTM source is equal to cohort. Okay, see I changed the case here, and we should see these come in if I hit myself here on the site and we go back to our real-time reports, we're going to see these come in. So I come down here to traffic sources, and we can see, there it is. Here's my kind of crazy case that came through here. Now the problem is, even if these mediums are here, if I have some that are like this, and some that are like this, and like this, really those are the same mediums and sources. However, if I look at my reports as those come through here, what we find is those are going to come in separately. So if I come through and I see my reports, I'm going to see that Corey Koberg 
in one form. And then if I actually open up a completely different browser here, an incognito window, and do even another one here so I can have these two on at the same time. I got my regular browser, my incognito browser. You can see two different sources that are there in terms of spelling capitalization. I start to see these show up differently. Now what I see is that I've got one visitor from each. I start to throw off all my stats. Of course, we know that from a campaign source point of view, we want to consolidate these and have these look the same have these be the same, but I can't always control how people are going to link to my site, what they're going to use. They may put capital there and start with the capital. Some people may put lowercase across the board. As an analyst, for the most part, when I'm looking at my views, I don't care. I want those to be all lowercase because I want to combine these two. And I want to show that there were two visitors who were using that medium and source combination. I don't really care how you capitalized it. The good news is this is really easy to do. I'm going to come over here to admin. Again, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to apply this filter. I'm going to say that we're going to lowercase the medium. Custom filter, lowercase. I'm going to apply that to campaign medium. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to head back to my reports. I'm going to go back to the real time ones here. Look at my traffic sources. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh those here, as well as with my incognito window. In fact, I'm going to start a brand new incognito session. And what we'll see if we head back to our reports is that the medium here for both of those, now instead of having Corey all crazy camel case up here, Corey has been lower cased. I've forced those into lowercase. Now, if I did that for both medium and source, these would both be lowercase, and they would be combined into one. So we want to not just apply this to the mediums, of course, but we want to do the exact same here. We want to come in, put a lowercase on source, custom filter, lowercase. I'm going to apply that to campaign source. Save that. Both of these would be applied. And now both this here, I start a new incognito window, head back here, look at my sources, and now we see these start to be combined. So now what we see here are the remnants from all of our ones here over the last few minutes, but the one that just shows up here, all lowercase, Corey Coburg, both of these now here. However, I push this through from now on, it's going to force lowercase to medium, it's going to force lowercase to source. And it's going to start tracking all those things in the same single bucket. And that's really where we want it. So we can see here the filter is doing the things we want it to do, which is combining no matter what I do from the case, a lower casing source and medium. My tip is that I highly recommend that when you come in for almost all of your analysis profiles, apply a lowercase filter to medium, to source, and to campaign name. Because in almost all cases, we don't care how those are capitalized, but Google Analytics will put them in different categories if you don't. So email with a capital E, email with a lowercase e, we don't care, lowercase it. So campaign, name, medium, and source, go ahead and apply that lowercase filter. Another quick thing I want to take a look at here, if we come to the custom filters, is the ability to do includes and excludes. Last time we took a look, predefined filters, and here we looked at the ability to do it to a subdirectory and to the host name here. And that's what we're going to take a look at how we built that in a custom filter. If we wanted to include only to a certain host name, and so we had a subdomain perhaps, maybe this is going to be a blog dot, for example, we could come over here and we could take a look at host name and our filter pattern. We want to say this is going to have blog in it. So our host name must have blog. If I hit this as an include filter and save that, I'm only going to get traffic at that point that's going to be to the blog. Or in my case, let's say we put in one here that's going to be only to the beta site. So include only beta. So now in this time, I've got this one where I'm only going to include the beta site. Now through here, it's going to do the exact same thing as we did on the previous one where we were looking at just the subdirectory of blog. But now it's going to do it on the host name instead of the subdirectory. So hopefully you're starting to see how these profile filters, these view filters can be really useful. These are the only places we can touch on IP addresses. This is a great way to not just strip out our internal traffic, but we can also take a look at how we can clean up the data before it even hits the account, particularly by using those lowercase filters. Again, I recommend you use those on all the campaign variables. 
I encourage you to set up a sandbox view here, test some of these out, use that real-time trick to make sure that they're doing the things that you think they're going to do, and then use these to clean up your data and make your Google Analytics that much more powerful. Next time, we're going to take a look at how we can use the advanced ones to set up even more powerful profile filters than what's given there in those options. But for now, there's quite a bit you can do with what we've seen here today.